education at Real Tear. Peter Matthews, one of the founders of Real Tear, and also Max, who is an agency, works for the agency, writes about a million dollars in GCI. And what makes this guy remarkable is he's writing a million dollars and he doesn't have an assistant because he's learned how to have technology complement him, not substitute him. And he's going to talk about what he does with real tear that allows him to become so much more efficient and have more time. In addition to that, in this session, Susan is going to share with you a number of templates that we've been working with the team at real tear, which we call them the real estate gym templates. But I want to let you know that things are very flexible with real tear. If there's video that you want to be putting into your proposal, you can do it. Um, they work with the whole industry. And I've got to say to you, as far as I'm concerned right now, this is the week that you've got to turn around and just accept you need to have pitch in your portfolio of your services. If you've got a mobile phone, right, you've got a computer, you need to have pitch. And we're going to talk about what Max does with his uh, pre-list, his um, um, post list and how he stays in contact with people. We're going to talk a little bit about listing presentations. We're going to have a little bit of Lee, who's always got some very good one-liners and nice philosophy statements towards real estate. But guys, you know, pretty excited. We've gone from nuts to normal. And um, I can tell you we're back at work today. we got 11 straight hard work weeks. I want everyone that's watching this at the end of this to get involved, to contact Real Tear and get this up and running. So firstly, Lee, how are you going? You're in Bathurst? I am, just arrived and uh, working with some, actually got a, a whole new team going on the platform. So we're coming down to launch, train, do it all in one. And uh, it's, it's actually a good way of doing it, Tom, that yes, there's technology, but like we're discussing today, how do you use that tech? What's the configuration? What's the wording that's going to get you the most impact and results with the people that you're pitching for business for? Beautiful. Now, 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 Pete, you've been absolutely passionate about you. You've got this this call it a mission statement, a legacy, a purpose that you believe that real estate can be done absolutely better than it than it has been, and that technology is an enabler to allow that to happen. And the benefits are that the the vendors and buyers will have a far better experience because of it. Today, we're specifically, Pete, going to be talking about um, um, pitch, the ultimate listing presentation weapon. Um, but you know, I'm just I'm just curious. Are you seeing are you seeing agents like a lot of agents like like Max around the country that are able to uh, incorporate technology to make them more efficient, or is is he a one off, or is there other people doing it? Oh, I think Max is a one of a kind as an individual because he's such a lovely fella. Uh, but but no, look, it's um, the the way that we've designed the tools, Tom, is so that anyone um, you don't have to be tech savvy. In fact, we've got a whole range of different people from different backgrounds and different ages that that are utilising the technology. And what's really um, I guess makes me feel really, really good is, is that because we've designed it from an agent's perspective, we've done everything that we can to ensure that it is as simple as possible with as few keystrokes as possible um, and can be done from anywhere. And, and um, you know, I'm really proud to say that this Max is one of 10,000 people um, that are using the platform and Max uses it really, really well. That's why I'm so proud to have him on, um, on this podcast. But yeah, I'd like to say Max is a one of a kind, but, um, but the text's, uh, available to everyone, anywhere, anytime. I'm, I'm surprised when I was talking off camera with Max, he's even more pumped about the sign component of Real Tear, um, which we'll we'll talk about. It was not was the purpose of this this web this webinar. But Max, firstly, you know you got four kids, yeah, um, um, and you run a real estate business without a personal assistant. One of the few people that would write over half a million or six hundred. Uh, in GCI, close to a million you're writing, um, without an assistant. Do you think you can continue working without an assistant and do that level? Um, look, the goal at the moment for me, Tom, is to get to a point where I have consistency at this sort of volume and without a PA, and then I'm just sort of mentally going to get to a crossroad where I have to decide to put on a, a resource or not. But but I, when I first started out, I really wanted just to have consistency in my business, and that was the main goal. 
Can, Lee, feel, feel to jump in at any time because you know uh, Max a lot better than what I do. You've worked with him. Um, but I want to ask you, Max, out of everything in real tear, what are the top things that allow you to be able to, like, what's your favourite products in real tear? Let's start off with that. My, 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 well, my favourite is sign because at the end of the day, that's what finalises the transaction. And so you just get excited when you put together a deal um, through the product while you're either sitting at home or in the office and you're not spending those hours printing out contracts and running them around, getting them signed by buyers or vendors. And then you can move on to the next one so quickly. Okay. Was it hard? For, are you a tech savvy person? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Can, can I ask, was it like the learning period of being able to do this from your home versus you printing off a contract and getting the buyer to sign it and then you witnessing it? Yeah. Is, there, is there a big learning period? Um, look, it's not a big... I think it's just an acceptance of wanting to, to change and to give it a go. And then once you... You know, there's always going to be trial and error and, you know, you're going to find your own pattern with it. But once you get to that stage where you feel very comfortable with using the products, then it just becomes just normal part of you know the business and day and life of what you do. And Tom, I think a really good thing we're seeing now is people like Max are thinking, well, it's quicker to do it than try and find someone to help me out and be that PA and support. Because when you request something, you, you request, you wait, you got to chase it and then hope another request doesn't come in on top of that one versus working as you go is a completely different way of doing it. You don't have to remember to ask someone to do that. You are, it is quicker to do it than fill it in and then wait for it. And that bouncing ball of email. And I think that the cut down of email of correspondence is the best part of it because whatever you're doing is happening because you know it happened and you wanted it to happen. But then as the client sign or the purchaser signs, or 20 more offers come in and everyone's notified, you don't have to notify or do all that. You are doing that because the system and the platform has taken that weight for you. And seeing Max do what he's done, and actually, Max, I might get you to share that story where there was a time sale going on and you had a choice of there was a time sale, then this other one, I'll just go traditional, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And it may just step back into traditional versus digital. What happened in that one? Yeah, well, we decided to flip a property into a timed auction because of the scenario that was playing out. And then at the, at the same, that evening, I was doing a traditional exchange of contracts. At the same, we were sort of negotiating over the phone and, you know, traditional offers coming through on email or text. And, you know, I think I wrapped up the timed auction one when it closed at well, five o'clock that, that night. But the other one went to, I think, nine or 10 o'clock that night, back and forth. And then we finalized it then. So, um, you know, but both worked well, but you could see the, the benefits of popping it onto the timed auction. Yeah. Beautiful. How many, you've been in real estate for how long now? Well, selling for 14 years. I started, I started a couple of years before that as a leasing consultant, then property manager. So let's talk about at the moment you've got a you've got a database and I'm not quite who they, are the agency uses is it agent box or um... yeah they've got an agency data box yeah okay. agent box yeah you got you got this database right but you're also you you use the digital price updates yeah. um, that you're sending you're sending out which is the real tear product can I ask you um, um, how often do you send them out um, and do you send them out by SMS um, how many times a year um, and just, yeah, anything that you've yeah. got to share about that. So I've, I've got close to probably 2,000, 2,500 sort of people on my database, owners in the area, and I just always have a goal of getting in touch with them by phone either once or twice a year. And then every time I leave a message for someone or I get onto them, it's always followed up with the pitch product. Because years ago, I used to do like a handwritten card and post it to them, or you drop something down to their letterbox, whereas now it's all done on email or SMSs. So when you say the pitch product, you're, you're, you're referring to the one that gives them an just update? Just an update, yeah, price update, yeah. 
a price update with a few surrounding sales. But but relevant to their property. So because I know their property, I know them, then whatever their their price bracket, their style of property, I will, I'll select comparative properties for them. So they're not just getting random sales around their property, they're getting specific sales relevant to their property. Okay, so Lee, Lee's just actually put in the chat box for everyone that's watching on Zoom, you can see that 0429 272 009. For those that are watching on Facebook, you can't see that. So I'll say that number slowly. Please text 0429 272 009 and write the word price update in the text message. And that's going to give you an example of the sort of document that you can text out to your owners. Um, Max, can I ask you, how long does it take for you to prepare each of those price update pitch documents? Uh, about two minutes. You just pick two or three surrounding sales, is it? Yeah, six, maybe six sales, certain price range, bedrooms, house, semi, townhouse. And because you start to know your marketplace pretty well, you're pretty quick to pick up what's relevant for each, each owner. What do you reckon? Send that, do you send that out, what, once a year or two times a year? or Once once or twice a year for passive people in the database, yeah. Okay. So, Susan, if you're in the background, Susan, I wouldn't mind you doing a bit of a share screen, even though people have probably texted the number and seen it. Maybe if I can get you to share screen of a sample real estate gym one that I've been working with, uh, with Bianca in the background. And while Susan is potentially getting that document up. I just want to ask you, Max, here it comes in here. So um, so Susan, just scroll through there. And I want to let everyone know that all these things are movable. You can add video to it, um, your own profile photos there, um, basic short information. This is all movable. All we've done is give you an idea. We've looked at the number of documents. Thanks for that, Susan. I'll get you to stop share there. Um, I, I, I want everyone to also know that there's another document, which is the digital introduction, do you, which is like was the original pre-listing kit. Yeah. So, so Max, were you using original pre-listing kits? Yeah, I was. I was from time to time. Yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah. Okay. What do you, do, what, do you use the digital introduction now? Yeah, well, now if, if someone's thinking of selling and they're wanting me to either come down and sort of pitch on the property or sort of start talking about timing, I'll actually send a full proposal to them before we arrive. So I, 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 sort, of, I sort of skip past the pre-list and just send them the full proposal so they've got everything they need and then we drop down and sort of have a chat or catch up. Okay. Do you actually, on the full proposal, do you actually, do you actually cover... Things like marketing and costs. Yeah, marketing fee. I don't give a price, but I give comparative sales. I give timeline. Yeah, everything. I, and then I, I follow up with um, my auctioneer and information about that. And yeah, it's pretty detailed. So, 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 Lee, can I ask you? You've been working very closely with Realtor. The the digital introduction. Do do most agents do what Max is doing, or do they use different approaches? To, to the pre-list? Yeah, this is such an important point. Depending on your relationship intensity with a person and also in property management, we see this as well. So there's two options. The digital introduction is the person that doesn't know you that well. They may take it a little bit fast in the relationship if there was a calendar of events, uh, fees, everything in there, because that's more of a submission or proposal, if you like. But when you've had great conversations on the phone and we, we've discussed certain things already. What the guys are doing really well is, okay, there is a submission and they're using, let's call it the meeting opener to do the heavy lifting, which is the price update, submission, digital introduction, all in one. And, and, and that's a very important point. Pitch is a multimedia communications tool. And I know when we were doing Owens Cassily down in Adelaide, it was one of the biggest indexes I've ever seen of information. But in the back of pitch, you can go into edit and you just click on the little I and it will hide everything you don't want to be shown. So I might have a Big Mac and make it a quarter pounder with three clicks because that's not going to be relevant. They're not going to use 
They don't need to know about a time sale. They don't need to know about this. So off, 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 off. And because it is a live document, what you can actually do is do the submission, uh, maybe leave out fees and pricing. And then when you've concluded with the owner, you say, look, I'm going to go away now, update those final things we discussed, including the calendar of events. So we know the rollout plan, but they can click on that same link. And those things are now on because we've gone into the back end to just turn them on. So it is a live document. It is a live plan. And de again, depending on that relationship with your potential seller, like if, you, if you've had them out looking at property, you, you've had five or six great phone calls, I'd do what Max is doing going, right, I, I'm assuming we're going ahead. I'm just popping over to have a look through the house. And that's that difference and intensity of how good is the relationship? How much can I layer in? So and I say this to all the real tier users, I hope you don't have to do a proposal. Like I think an error is to go in and go, okay, there's my digital introduction. And you want to sign it on the night when you're doing the listing conversation. You don't want to have to do the proposal. A proposal is a backup plan. And what Max is doing is perfect. That's my submission. This is what I'm proposing. Should you go ahead? Uh, and then the final part of the decision is for them to go ahead on the night if they wish. So you don't have to do a two-step thing. You can do it all in one. Hmm. So can I ask you, Max, the phone call comes in, 11 Smith Street, Mossman. After you've hung up, how much time does it take you to go on to pitch, produce the document to be able to text that out? What's the, yeah. Like, uh, like as Lee was saying, depending on that sort of the state of the relationship, but if you if it's a fairly cold introduction and they, they're wanting to get you involved, then you could send something out within five five minutes, eight minutes, something like that. When you're working on it, do you work on your on your phone or work on on a computer? Look, I I do work on the computer. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so Lee and Peter, you'd be interesting. I was talking to a client in the St George area who's one of who's a real tech client, and he rang me up the night before Good Friday, and he said, "Mate, he goes, I'm I'm devastated because I've missed out on this." Uh, this listing, but I rang up the owner and I wished them all the best. And then I said to him, um, Mark, did I said, did, did you know, did, when did you know that you weren't going to get the listing? He goes, it was really obvious. He goes, I just wasn't getting an alert that they were looking at my document. They just <laughs> never, they just <laughs> never looked, at, they never looked <laughs> at the document and, you know, and I'm yeah. sitting there and I'm thinking there, yeah. this, this alert, this oh, alert that's that you gold. get, can, to tell me a little bit more about that, uh, Max. Well, particularly for the passive people in the, in the, in the, that you know, when, when you send it out to them, well, for, first of all, the, the amount of times they don't answer the phone call and then you send them the email and they look at the email within 10 minutes. So right. they, they might not want to talk to you, but then they're interested to receive something from you, you know, in, the, in their inbox. Um, and then the other thing is you can get them to click on, they click on it, say, six months later, because then now they're in the sort of frame of mind of like making a decision. And then you can sort of hone in on those people and say, well, look, they're obviously doing something because they've now clicked on the submission or the pitch update, you know, four months later. And if, you, you know, at the moment I've got, Pete would know, but, you know, probably three and a half, three, eight, three thousand 3,000 pitch documents out there. So they do all filter through over time. So you got 3,000 or 4,000 Pitch document. These are people that price you, updates. Yeah. Price price updates. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you get the notifications, do they just come to your mobile phone as a text message? I, I've opted just to have them come to my computer, but you can have them go into your phone. Yeah. And can I ask you, what's a what's a non non pushy way of when you've been alerted? Like, how do you sort of use that information? without sort of saying, I'm spying on you? Well, I, I wouldn't do it like within 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> but look, the, I, I sort of think the next day is appropriate, you know, because you, you probably haven't spoken to them for about three or four months. Do you know what I mean? So it's not as if it's like, and look, Tom, like with the change that's happened in the market in the last sort of month and a half, a lot of people are clicking on price updates at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, timely. It's actually very, very timely. This, uh, this is probably one of the most useful things that you can be doing is, is getting these price updates there. Now, now, so let me get this clear. We've got 
You're using pitch. You're using sign, right? Um, you're using any of the the sale products, the auction. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, what, what specifically? Oh, the the agency subscribes to the the auction now product, and so every property that we run is always streamed live through auction now. And then the, you've also got the option to tip it into a timed auction, um, if if appropriate, or if you wanted to start off like that as well. And Does just for everyone watching, auction now has been rebranded to sell, so it's pitch sign sell. And where Max is, it's all on one platform. And that's been an interesting journey for us, Tom, that, you know, pitch was the first thing we launched and then sign was required. But sell, uh, the reason we changed the naming from auctionnow.com.au was most people want it for private treaty. They want it for a time sale. Uh, they want to run a normal communication through it, but register those people as a follower. So not everything was going to auction, only 18% of sales last year were at buyer auction. So we actually redid the platform to sell. So you can sell anything of any uh, method of sale on the platform. That's gold. Susan, in the background while you're there, if you don't mind um, doing the, and Lee, while that's happening, I'd love to give him a, a little bit of training nuggets today. Um, maybe, may, I'd love to ask you, what, what are some of your favourite pre-listing questions, Lee, you know? Um, if you can think about that, Susan's just showing, um, Susan, I presume this is the, uh, this is the pre-list, the, the digital introduction. Again, um, we've, we've got it, we've, we've designed it, looking at all the other documents that are out there and looking at all the training content, but this is all changeable. Thanks a lot, Susan. Um, Lee, what, 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 are, what are some of the, um, what are some of the, the, you know, you're on the phone having a conversation with someone, setting an appointment. What are some of the questions that you're, you're chatting, chatting to the owner about that are going to help you move forward with them? Great question. And I think some things are a phone question. Some things aren't a phone question. And I hear some agents say something, you think, oh, that's not going to go well. And they'll say, oh, no, I still got in there. But the phone question came through where the owner said, price, but I will not go with you because that was an inappropriate question. And that can be who's going to be in the meeting, uh, sometimes even getting into the pricing area, which a lot of people try and do. It can just come across a little bit sharp versus if you go on a product knowledge level and a reason level of where they're going, I think that works best. But some of my favorite questions, Tom, would be, what prompted you to call our company? And I think that's an important one because they'll say, oh, you guys sold number 15 at High Street. Oh, did you get to go along and see that one? Oh, we just can't believe what that sold for. That's That gives you a whole channel of different questioning if you can find out the reason. Because as we know, an inbound call now is rare compared to the checking you out digital. And even in our last interviews, that came up a lot where owners are ringing agents saying, you don't know me, but I know you. I've been following all your properties online. I saw five of those timed auctions. I've never heard that before. Max, I can't believe that one sold on Thursday night for 200,000 above reserve. Uh, I want to talk to you about that. So Max has been followed now by people he doesn't even know, but want to know about him due to the properties doing the heavy lifting. So I think firstly, Tom, finding out what prompts you to call our company means you don't get on the wrong channel. And the second one is, can you tell me about any improvements you made on the home that you feel have added value? Because a lot of people could be thinking of renovating or they've just spent half a million dollars, uh, which, which doesn't get you a lot these days in a renovation. And to know those things, and then if you did get a, if you did get a, a great price for the property you're in now, where would you be off to? When do you need to be there? And, and, and I think getting into their destination becomes really important versus... Um, getting into a stage about their own property, which you may have gone over the line, that needs to be face-to-face. -face. Okay, gold. So, Max, there's a button on the uh, price update document under underneath surrounding sales that says book an appraisal. Yeah, yeah. Right? Do you, do you get many of those coming in? Like, so you've got documents out there, documents yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah, you you do not not that often, but they do come through. I'm actually surprised that even on the proposals, the accept the proposal, a lot of people have started to to tick that button, which has only happened in the last sort of six to twelve months. I've noticed more and more. 
Tick, tick what? Sorry, tick what button? So the similar thing with the, the price update for request and appraisal in the proposal submission, you can have accept the proposal. So, you know, take on the business. Okay. And what's so been interesting about that, Tom, is when an agent gets told, oh, look, thanks for all your help, but we've decided to go with Max and they go, oh, have you signed anything? Yeah, we've accepted his proposal. Mm. The fact they've clicked accept, for a lot of people is like, I've accepted it. Mm -hmm. Yet for us, mm. Uh, Max then clicks generate agency agreement. All that information then goes into sign. So he doesn't have to rekey all that data. And this is an interesting thing in this conversation. These are digital configurations, but as an industry, we use the word document. And for all the listeners out there, and Tom, you asked that great question, Max, how long does it take you to put a proposal together? Max is only tweaking a couple of little things to the same configuration versus in design world, we've got to hit um, duplicate and then we've got to go back in and put all the data in. This is just a quick tweet, tune and send. Uh, you're not rebuilding these things. The template's already generated, a couple of modifications, price, fees and marketing, and you're back out there. Yeah, listen, I, I can see how this is working for you, Max. I mean, I know the agency, you guys are on a decent split versus the rest of the industry take out the fact that you don't have a $50,000, $100,000 resource at the moment, writing a million bucks, you've got, you know, you've got your, um, your uh, real tear uh, overhead, which is significantly small <laughs> compared to, you know, and I'm just, I'm just curious on that. Like, you know, Peter and Lee, this is to you. So the, the teams that are watching this on Facebook and also on Zoom right here, right now, what, what happens if they're in an environment where the boss is saying, mate, well, listen, we're not doing that at the moment, right? We're not doing it at the moment. But you're you're an individual that is sort of saying, you know what? I've been inspired by listening to Max, right? I want to have a crack at this. Can it work where the office isn't necessarily on real tear, but you are? Yeah, you can. That's um, no problem with that at all, Tom. I mean, everything that is designed for pitch and for sign um, can operate on a range of different um um, platform so you basically can have your own pitch um, we, we help in that design process there's a whole range of different configurations that you can have for that when it comes to agency agreements um, we've got a range of alternatives we do have integrations with a whole series of different providers so you could do that um, but what I mean you can do it separately I'd be suggesting the principal that that's something that they should probably look at if they were saying listen I'm not interested in getting involved in anything that's going to provide efficiency I'd say that you know, the ability to, for, for Max to be able to earn the rebate that he does is that, you know, the principal is going to be able to have um, a lot more efficiencies on their side of the transaction to be able to ensure that they can rebate that salesperson more commission. So um, I would strongly encourage the principal to, to review it all because there's a lot of value that they can get on their side. So the ideal, the ideal scenario would be an office takes on pitch, sign, sell, um, um, have have the works uh, probably get started ASAP with what you probably need need the most. Um, and can I ask you, Peter? Also, does it does it if if you if you're with Agent Box or if you're with Eagle or if you're with Box and Dice, uh, what's the setup there? Yeah, so we've got a range of integrations with different um, CRM providers. So the, the way that we've designed the platform for pitch, sign and sell is it, it follows a very similar workflow. So Max will tell you that whatever he does in pitch, he does the same thing in sign. Uh, we push and pull that information um, between CRMs. We've got different levels of integrations with different CRMs. Um, Agent Box is who Max uses and that pushes and pulls data into Agent Box, which means that Max doesn't need to read key any data uh, and on the agency side, that information just drops directly into the CRM. So it's pretty handy. But um, Max made a comment just before, Tom. Um, I think you said 4,000 um, price updates. You know, that's that's your pipeline, Max, isn't it? I mean, you're, you're a guy who's working on your own. You've got four kids, two, four, six, and eight at home. Um, you're, you're involved in, I think, this year, 73 deals um, with an average um, sale price of about $1.3 million. But that's a lot of that's a lot of work, but you're managing all of that um, on your own. 
Thanks, Pete. <laughs> yeah, that's that required commentary there, Maxie. <laughs> How are you managing 73 sales? That's the thing that I think. Oh, I just wouldn't want people to think just because you're operating alone on shore, you're doing $10 million deals to earn that sort of commission. Yeah. You know, 73 well, yeah. deals is phenomenal. Yeah, and I, look, I, I, I do lean on my colleagues as well. So, like, it, it, though I don't have a resource that I pay as a sort of PA or anything like that, I do have the um, trust with some colleagues in the office that can help out from time to time. So when things are busy, I, I know that I can always sort of rely on someone to sort of step in. Yeah. And that, that Tom's probably, a, I guess, a, a big benefit of all of this too, is that, you know, Max's colleagues in the agency are using the same software, the same system, working the same processes. So the whole idea of that is, is that, you know, they can pick up where Max has left off. So you're only just on holidays, I think, just mm. just now, Max, were you? Yeah, back back today. <laughs> yeah, so we're lucky enough to get you right in time. But I think that's the other the other benefit that comes from this is that if, if you are using this at an office or an agency level, is that you know your your colleagues are using the same system, the same platform. Um, they can engage with um, buyers and sellers in exactly the same way if you're working on listings together, which is something that Max and the team of the agency do really really well. And yeah. integrations uh, that. You know, everyone talks about should I be on one or the other. The platform is your digital environment where actually I was doing an interview on editing an interview on Saturday and the agent's in four different locations. So he's just using the whole platform. Everything's paperless because he can work and prospect from anywhere. And when people talk about the integrations, they talk about the CRM. But we're also integrated to Decred for all the marketing. So the fact you've got this proposal and now you want to order your marketing, the Decred in integrations in there. We've also got the payment gateways for people that are funding the marketing. So as long as it's on this one platform, and it's a definition of real estate, isn't it? It's people, property, and title. And people is where your, your CRM starts. But as soon as you activate that relationship, as Max is talking about with you know, 4,000 consented future people, future sellers in your marketplace. And Tom, you and I discussed this on the podcast. You need 900 for 46. Yeah. So Max has now boomed over that, that his entire listing stream is real tear versus I'm spending more on mailbox drops and uh, bus stops with no return versus I have one listing stream, one platform, but 4,000 consented records. That's a phenomenal number of people that are, you know, your future business in your pipeline. Yeah. Well, Lee, all I can say to you is that I reckon the reason why this is so good is because it works. People don't want to receive how to make lasagna or all this sort of stuff. If they can actually get a health update on their asset that's done to them in a seamless way, and if you've been a good enough agent at some point to collect the data, and obviously, Max, you've collected the data. I presume you've collected the data between open homes and having worked in the marketplace and dealing with buyers and potentially, did you ever do much prospecting yourself? Like cold? Oh, yeah, heaps. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, you know. I sat so you, in the office, yeah, years. So, you, so you've done that and you've collected this data. Yeah. You've got this data and now you're giving them credible evidence-based documents Yeah, and that yeah. these documents are pretty much your superannuation for these people. So like to me, step number one is get real tear. Step number two, claim as many properties as you can Fast. This is now a race. This is a race. So I've got to tell you, you're going to get first move advantage at the moment. At the moment, there's a few maxes around Australia, but not a heap. You can actually go into your marketplace right now and say, I will be the thought leader ambassador and adopt as many homes as possible. Get them these documents two, two times a year, three times a year, whatever you choose. And you're set, you're set for life. Now, Lee and Peter, um, I want to ask you, how do we tell the people on Facebook and Zoom, wh where do they go to get this up and running? Because I reckon this is the best activity you can do. This week, you should be getting yourself ready, organised for the beginning of an 11-week sprint. Where do, where do they go? What's the, Is it realtear.com? Yep, you've got realtear.com and you've also got our 
uh, direct line into our service centre, which is 1300 367 412. And once you're on the site, you, you'll get all the information, which is great. You can book that demo. Uh, we've got a stack of brilliant system trainers, account directors that will not only show you the product, but explain the configurations of what people are doing. So Tom, when you see a $5 million performance pitch, you can see the time they put into that, be it the videos, the photos, the testimonials. And I think a lot of people think, oh, you just turn this thing on and that's all you need to do. Uh, yes, you turn it on and it works straight away, but this becomes your communications platform. Like you look at Max now, he's claimed 4,000 doors through his area. So as he drives through Mossman, he can see his signboard and all these doors and that's where the notifications are coming through. And as, as we're seeing in this new world, people changing fast today where they say, this has happened, we're moving to London. And the only notification we used to get was a signboard of a competitor out the front of the house when you drove past versus if they would have opened that price update or any of those communications. And Tom, you mentioned the agent that um, lost the listing before. He could have used our traditional lost listing letter which was a very famous letter saying, wishing you well, and you know the market's in great shape, and if it doesn't work out, feel free to come back to me. That can be sent as a pitch now. And you'll see that they've opened that. Like it doesn't just have to be a submission or a proposal. You can reconfigure any of those communications in that one-to-one -one prospecting. And you know the lost listing letter, that technique, people used to receive that and go, I've made the wrong decision and go back with the agent. So, because they haven't always signed the documentation or signed on glass at that point, but that, it, there's just so many great ways of using it that way. Man, I'm listen, Pop. I've got to tell you, Lee and Peter. You, I'm very, you know, you told me about Max. Very impressed. You seem to be uh, uh, more on the introvert side. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> more on the yeah. introvert side. Puts his head down. Four kids. <laughs> Mate, can I ask you, do, do, do you work long hours? No, not, not really. I, I used to. I used to. But now, like, I'd be, like, I finish up at 6 o'clock, 6.30, you know, I start at 9. So, I, you know, I do, I do kids drop off a couple of days a week and, yeah. That's not a bad life. Nine, nine, yes. nine to 6, do your drop-offs, earning seven, 800000 bucks for yourself, more than Scott Morrison, you know? <laughs> Pump a, few, pump a few pump a few price updates out there while you're yeah. sitting at home while you've got your legs up there but, but i would say tom it, like the price updates are great and a real real add-on but you do need to speak to people you can't just think that you can just blast it out to thousands of people and not have engagement like you have to talk to people yeah, I was going to make that point, Maxie. Um, I think what you're great at, at doing with this is, it, you, it, and Lee, Lee, we've talked about this a lot, you know, the tech with technique. Um, the thing about making the phone call, having the conversation, letting know the customer that you're going to be sending this through and, and, and regularly makes a big difference. Because I, I was with a, um, an agent the other day and I just said, oh, look, have you looked at the report to see what your open rate is like? And what they were doing is just sending it off directly to the database and waiting for people to engage. So, you know, we're a relationship business and Max, you do it beautifully. Like you, you aren't an extrovert, you are a bit of an introvert, self-admit it. Um, but, you know, your connection with your customers is, is just right on cue because you're talking to them all the time, engaging with, with information that's relevant to them and, and things like that. So hats off to you for that. But I know we're going to run out of time. So the one thing I wanted to just ask you about was about the listings that you picked up off um, your, your auction at uh, Munro Street. Just talk how that worked. Munro Street. No, remind me. You don't remember? No, no. We did an online auction. You'd listed a listed a property just um just off the off the normal arrangement. Did an online auction. And you ended up with two further listings that came off the back of that. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, no. We had the, we had the normal auction, and then it was viewed online, and then uh, the next door neighbour was watching the auction play out live streamed, and then he. He walked up after the auction and wanted to sell his place off the back of that sale. And, and then I think the third one in Munro Street, the owners were in WA and watched the auction from WA. So, but, but all the tools, there's, there's so much to it, but you're right. It's just like all these little, it's like a Swiss army knife for selling, really. So, so, 
So, Pete, I just want to ask you on that. So, you're these these live streams of options to protect to people in your pipeline. There, I mean, that's another touch point, but it's 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 a it's a sledgehammer touch point if you ask me, because they're actually seeing a live auction, particularly if it's a good result, right? If it's a good result. So is that what a lot of the clients are doing? They're, 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 they're sending their pipeline um, links to watch auctions on, uh, on auction now, which is now yeah. called auction sell. Yeah. Yeah, okay, ab- so, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like any good auction that you've got coming up for that weekend, you would send the link to all your potential pipelines to follow. And then they probably don't watch it at the time. And then you can download the link and then follow it up and send it to them again to make sure that they can see it, what actually transpired that Saturday. Okay. And what's great in that, Tom, is you're shooting a link out saying, hi, Tom, just sold this property. The buyer would have been interested in yours. Have a look at the result. And it's just that, you know, all of us in real estate, all we do is stimulate the marketplace. And it's like when no one's sold in a street for 10 years, one sells, five go. I think the price update stimulates people. People seeing a result on a a live auction stimulates people. And then suddenly, because we are getting that notification process, uh, Max is using that great technique of warm up the data before calling it. And I like how Max pointed that out of, you can't just send it, that's warming up. But if they've opened it, now the phone call can kick in. And getting your prospecting sequence right is all we're talking about here. And if it starts there that we've activated a property, they've opened it up, I can now make that phone call. Then I can send out another link of, should you move, should you renovate? You keep stimulating that sequence. But the fact you've got an inbound digital notification, that's the game changer. Because if everyone was taught outbound and just hope something happens versus six months down the track, they've opened it because something's happened in their life and today, there's lots of things happening in people's lives and different thoughts going on. And now Max is notified. He's warmed up the data. He's earned the right to a real phone call versus I'm just ringing people randomly hoping I land one. You know, that's just anyone watching this would be exhausted with that because it's unsustainable to keep ringing um, hit and miss phone calls and getting a bravery award that you did 100 cold calls today. Anyone can ring 100 people and speak to no one. Versus Max is having real conversations with consented data. How long's the, how long's the demo take? Someone's just asking. Uh, depends on um, on which products you're after, Tom. But for pitch, it's uh, it's pretty quick. We could probably do that in less than half an hour. Um, I think the main thing really is is that when we generally get inquiries from um, principals, is that they're generally interested in the. Um, the whole platform, just the ability to be able to manage like Max can, um, his whole business from prospecting right through to settlement, including the deposit and even now um, securely receiving the vendor bank account details. So that can take a little bit longer. So it's probably been an hour for the whole platform, but um, you know, we take them through all the steps and show them how easy it is to use and how consistent it is to put together. Okay, gold. I'm just running through some of these last final questions. Where can I get to see real tear pictures for five million dollar agents? That's from Henry Willis. I know I don't know what to say there, Lee. Uh, yeah. well, uh, I think we'd all appreciate everyone's hard work and privacy there. And you know, some of those we release. Valerie Timms was very good to allow us to release the work we did with hers, uh, and that's one we can release today, Tom. Yeah, same well, number for everyone. Yeah, the o four two nine two seven two double o nine number. Just text the letters TDI, which stands for the digital introduction. But TDI, that was one we were allowed to release. But Tom, on the opposite side of that, we've got some some of Australia's biggest performing agents on the platform, but they'll say to us, I don't want anyone to see these links. This is my life's work. And we respect that 100% because although they're out there in the marketplace with their future sellers, uh, they are confidential pieces of work, but the fact pitch is being used for those configurations. I saw one last week of an incredible agent, very famous in this country, but you look at the, the structure to it and think there is your life's works on how you pitch and sell real estate. Yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. And what we've done, Lee, with Susan, we, we've created very generic because we know most of our clients are under the 2 million price point. So we've actually done 
very generic. Susan's just going through that uh, there as well as we speak. Um, but the most important thing I'll let people know is everything is changeable. Um, so you can actually personalize it. Um, there's another question there. What's the difference between real tear and real time agent? Look, I've looked at the real time agent and um, I can tell you, look, I've looked at them, all the documents and I can tell you the reason I joined Lee and Peter is that for me, I had to make up my mind on where did I think over the next two to three years, the market was going to be. And I just felt that it was going to be in that, you know, real tear camp because it is a better product. It's more widespread. And most importantly, I was listening to what the clients were saying. Um, Susan, there's someone's just asked to text back that number. Peter Matthews has done that. It's all good. We're all under control. So gang, and I also believe every Thursday, Lee, that there's a training session on that are, that are held that allow people just to upskill on using all this stuff, correct? Correct. Uh, we've been running those. Actually, funny enough, it's this week that we're transitioning that particular um, webinar. It's been run, we've had one webinar running, but we've had a request to show the whole platform, and that's starting the week after. And Rob and I run that each Thursday at 10 a.m. Okay, beautiful. Now, listen, Max, an absolute, absolute privilege to meet someone like you, humble, keeps his head down, keeps his family to get this. This is what real estate should be all about. Bring, bring your family up try and make a decent dollar, keep it all together, right? Um, and, um, you know, absolutely outstanding. Good to see Dick Carlson's on. I haven't spoke to Dick for a while. Bianca, thank you so much. Thank you, Max. So Lee and Peter, thank you so much. Um, again, I'm, I'm sort of out there like a second salesperson to real tear. I, I just know that there are certain things that are going to make a big difference. And I believe that for me, like we're at the stage right now, that there is a group of agents that are going to take the lead, that are going to collect all the data, that are going to be doing these digital price updates, that are going to adapt very quickly to using the technology that's available, and they are going to win. But as Peter said, high tech, high touch. It's not replacing having some of the conversations. You need the hybrid version, high tech, high touch. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much and have a great week. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, really appreciate that. Thanks, Tom. Bye. Thank you, mate.